Alright, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here in Mandem and such. Uh, lots of videos. Uh, trying to convince, right? That's the simple agenda. Now, there are people who have a philosophical perspective, something like, uh, okay, it's determinism, therefore nothing can change, nothing can happen, therefore it's no point in having a conversation because nothing changes through conversations, <laughs> uh, which is just really crazy and silly. Um, obviously, nothing can change. Okay, it is determinism, but we can watch the determinism playing out, and we can see what makes things go one way versus left versus right. And it really is just about convincing arguments. I mean, um, let's say there was a pool of water and the human race was going to die of water deprivation. Okay, it was thirsting to death. Um, <clears throat> but the water looks scummy. Okay, so the idea is you have to convince the people that the scummy water isn't scummy water. Okay, you have to make an argument to explain why. Yes, it looks like there's a bunch of maggots in it, but there isn't. It's an optical illusion. So you're, it's, it's like explaining a mirage or something. And so you're trying to make the people understand that, no, it's not quicksand. It's a mirage. It's okay. Go ahead and walk on it. Okay, it's cement. Um, and the fact is, is you can make the argument well or you can make the argument badly. And that will decide whether those brains were triggered. Their reflexes flipped. And they did or didn't. So we know that there'll be a process that will decide what happens, okay? It's not gonna be um, an, uh, something we can't see. We can see the process, and we know the difference between a good argument and a bad argument. We know uh, the difference between a good effort and a lazy effort, and all of those things. So there's no, um, I don't think, any doubt that we know if we're sitting here reading the script and it's got something stupid in it, uh, you are really lazy and <laughs> you don't bother, um, let's say, getting up to, it's going to rain and you have to cover something that's outside or it's going to rust and uh, you decide not to cover it because you're lazy. Um, you know, that's a part of the script you'll all read. You'll see it coming. You'll see it happening. Uh, and you can change it, so to speak, in the sense that you're, the inevitability will be that you will be convinced that you need to change it. You need to make a better argument to yourself. You need to make a better argument to other people. Um, and and if you don't, then failure is going to be the result. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The script is going to read failure. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think, um, I don't think, you know, it's, you know, a lot of this is semantics, but, you know, there is, we, we have no control over anything, but we can see ourselves being consistent with um, recognizing some simple idea like that, that you can't climb the staircase without climbing the stairs, um, that everything is, um, you know, everything has a precondition and you're either setting up for the existence of the outcome you want or you're not. It's like you were building a nuclear bomb and, you know, you built all the parts except you didn't put the, you know, <laughs> the nuclear bit in there. They didn't put the radioactive element in the center to get uh, imploded. Um, yeah, not going to work. So you know, oh yeah, that's on the checklist. Okay, if that, if my brain doesn't see that happening, it can't expect anything in terms of a successful outcome. Um, and so we can sort of see that about human beings and what happens in the world. And we can see arguments winning and losing. We can see tendencies and memes winning and losing. And we can also know that, you know, if we don't show up for the war, uh, if no one sh shows up to fight it, then the, you're not going to win the war, right? If, if everybody's volunteering to go to fight the Nazis, for example, and only, you know, five fifty thousand people show up to volunteer, well, then you're not going to beat the Nazis. Yeah. And you're going to lose the war. Uh, and you could see that. And you could know it. So I'm just saying there's a ton of stuff we can know about the human condition where we know it's going the wrong way. It's uh, toxic, poisonous to its future. You know, all the religious stuff, all the other wooey crap. Uh, you know, people living for daydreams and bullshit. Um, and then all the hate crap and all the, you know, 
oh, we're never going to get past it, crap. And yeah, we we can get past it, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but we're not going to get there um, if we just keep being reactionary. Um, my way or the highway. Uh, you know, I won't accept any inconvenience. Um, you know, don't tread on me, bullshit, whatever, however you want to look at it. Uh, this lack of willingness to all of us to uh, invest in, uh, you know, attempting to build civilization, not destroy it. Uh, and um, well, anyway, so just in that sense, just in sense of having a better life or creating something, you know there's procedures. I mean, if you were working in a laboratory and you're trying to develop a vaccine or something, you know there's procedures. You have to follow the procedures, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's ways you build it and there's ways to fail at building it and I would argue that the mystics philosophy is the way to fail to be a philosopher a way to fail to use intelligence for any purpose um, because he you know he he doesn't um, recognize that uh, he actually has to make the persuasive arguments to win the argument he's not going to the argument is never going to get won if you don't make it and he won't make it in any direct way anyway and, he, and so um he's just gonna he's gonna fail to play his role properly and again i would say it's part of his role is as he damn well knows uh there's um no good reason to create sentient life forms because all they can do is try to escape uh the trap of their incessant need to be comforted and uh, they're very high maintenance and if you don't maintain them uh, they will suffer they will be tortured and it's just a fact and uh, you know he won't say it because he's just being a belligerent asshole uh, and that's it there's no other reason he won't say it it's just that he always want to belong to the anti-club um, and um, something like that anyway uh, <clears throat> But again, it's just sort of a waste that he sort of understands, okay, there's no free will. The brain is just the brain. It's a big, giant pile of gooey reflexes. All it does is um, tie triggers down, you know, pulls the, you know, pull the wires of the trigger on a shotgun, or it puts a rock in between the trigger, you know, and the piece of metal so you can never pull the trigger. And that's all the brain keeps trying to do is put rocks here and put, you know, controlled triggers. Um... And, and uh, you know, that's what we're made out of. Uh, and the only thing that, you know, I can pull rocks out of your triggers or I can wire, you know, I can screw with the triggers you have and you can screw with my triggers. Um, but it's really hard for us to internally, uh, with the resources we all, you know, that just we possess to do a lot of changing because obviously the change would have happened if it was there already. So we have to be um, moosed. We have to have something ping. We have to have something ping us with some sort of crap. Um, stimulate, shake. It says, yes, shake. It's good. Sometimes you fix something just by shaking it. <laughs> so we need something to shake us now and then uh, to gain some perspective and to, um, you know, um, fix the puzzle pieces that we have in some kind of confused or irrational or useless state. Uh, well, something like that anyway. Um, so th I think these are all very valuable conversations. Um, you know, again, you know, there's a lot of people who just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly whether it's, uh, you know, the, the nihilist, it gets a little bit into insulting them and um, the glibists <laughs> and uh, the wooists, though, in some way, the Buddhists. And that's a suggestion I heard is that um, the reason why people don't want to hear these kind of videos is because, yeah, I'm basically going to call Buddhism, you know, faggoty fairy tales. And, um, you know, nonsense, just another silly religion. And that's all it is. I mean, it's, oh, it says suffering sucks. It thinks suffering's important. It doesn't do a damn thing about it. I mean, it just absolutely mush uh, and then the whole idea that you can personally escape 
<laughs> you know, what, what the hell is that? That's a, I mean, that, that's, that's so below even Christianity. I mean, at least Christianity has that do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It has some notion that uh, you're not here just to you know, save your own skin. Uh, you know, that the idea is to try to save the others. Um, and, um, you, you know, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a pretty trivially um, not hard to figure out kind of concept that, um, you know, your skin isn't the only skin in this game, and it's just silly to think you've accomplished something if your uh, uh, effort is save me. Uh, me, 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 me. Anyway, that's the whole jumping in fire. I mean, you don't hear about any Buddhist strategy to pour gasoline over the entire Indian continent and then burn them all. <laughs> you know, they all they don't come up with some strategy to, to you know, burn um, all the good Indians so they all get liberated from playing uh, whatever... Uh, karma, um, uh, nirvana evolution. Uh, shit. You know, where they can jump out of the silly game of having to incrementally climb the, you know, animal staircase to get to bliss. Uh, and bliss is what? And, you know, even happiness is, has what meaning in the context of leaving everything behind in, uh, torture and torment um, I mean there's just no way to make that a, a rational ideal you know something that some good person would imagine oh I'll escape the concentration camp and everybody else will still be back there and they'll be whipped for letting me escape so their life will be even worse because they let me escape uh, but I'm safe so it's all the, well, I'm done here all the work is done yeah now, that would be a person, again, that you could have very little, uh, I could not identify with, okay, as my kind of people. Uh, anyway, um, so, let's see, what other context can I pile on this video? So, uh, yeah, so basically, look, the conversation is about the fact that, um, you know, we have brains, the brain's frankly make who you are and that's it there is nothing else making you there is no um, you know beam of radiation from some other source that's controlling you and making you do things and you know uh, you're not zombies being controlled by some radio control device and you know, somebody's turning the wheels uh, you know you just have a brain the brain has been conditioned in a conditioned a circumstance and um, that's it, you know, and it just interacts now with the mechanism that built it. And, uh, you know, I'd say the best part, you know, the part that needs to happen is, is that these, um, is that the, the part that can do logic will recognize that the world that created it didn't have much of that logic stuff in it, <laughs> you know, and it needs to. Uh, be reformed so when it makes new brains it makes them smarter okay and less error prone um, so we get this again we pull this this um, these these bad moronic axioms and memes out of the environment um, the religion and the woo uh, the wishful thinking the um, delusion that we're somehow um, born uh, decent when you no know, we're born pretty indecent uh, and pretty selfish pretty controlled by uh, stupid um, moronic bug logic and you know we have to be educated to recognize that the bug logic isn't good enough all right uh, yeah I think it's probably enough so let us play some of the video and see what it says. But basically, yes, all it's going to basically say is, yes, of course, your brain controls you. There is no you know, thing called a you, so to speak. There's brain producing you. I mean, but you are a you. There's just not a you controlling you, okay? There's just the brain, and you can call the brain me, 
I, um, Gary. Uh, you can call the brain lots of things, but it's just the brain. I mean, that shouldn't be too challenging an idea, and it certainly shouldn't be veiled in all this mush about how some of these wacky drug addict, uh, you know, woo assists um, somehow have found the truth by saying they don't exist. Aren't based on anything else, okay? Uh, all this this desperate wishing for a. Uh, yeah, so the, the sort of making the art look, you know. <laughs> The mystic is sort of arguing almost that religion and all that crap is about free will and that, you know, if you, it, 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 that somehow people thinking they must have free will, which means they must have free control, that they must somehow be in control, that somehow that's what religion is about or something. And no, religion's about hoping there's some kind of real God that's going to um, reward them for being a good person and that they're going to get, you know, they have a bargain they're making. And they're going to accept a bunch of tyranny on light in in life, and that somehow uh, it'll all be paid back in the future. Um, you know that all this money they lost, <laughs> you know, will they'll, they'll get it back again. Uh, some kind of crap like that. And we know that's the attraction of religion. Um, you know, not that the the free will thing is a problem. I mean, it's obvious that you know people not recognizing that. Um, you know, it's a mechanical universe and they're just part of the, you know, puppetry uh, being controlled by, you know, the circumstances, the energy. Uh, and that, um, you know, there's, there's, there's such a thing as inevitable outcomes and, um, and again, but we can, we can watch it happening so we can see the plane crash. We can see the plane is crashing long before it actually crashes. That's our advantage. And we can start to panic and say, well, we, we, we better react, trigger, guns, bang, bang. We ought to do something different than we're doing because the plane's crashing. Jump ahead a little. Okay, because it's our consciousness is this little tiny... Right, so just saying your consciousness is this much, okay? It's it's this little millisecond of time where, oh, I feel something and I'm having a blah, blah, thought idea. Some kind of mush has been projected on my view screen. Uh, little technical details like uh, the Terminator. You know, I have this little extra stuff that I have that I can see that you can't see. Uh, you know, that's blink, 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 you know, popping on the screen a little bit. And, um, you know, I don't make any of that, right? The Terminator doesn't make his view screen. He has to look at it and watch it, too. He has to see, oh, there's the information I asked for. Um, you know, it has to, the data has to be incorporated into the perception of your consciousness. But all of it is not you. I mean, it's... Your consciousness is not creating it. Your consciousness is all byproduct of it. You just watch through your consciousness. Your machine do its job. You watch yourself be you. You don't make yourself you. It excretes you. Uh, it, it, it is. So that's another way of just saying it. I mean, you're just the byproduct. Of the ingredients go in, a bunch of crap happens, different processing speed, different thoughts are slowly happening, lots of processing, little quick responses, intuitions, uh, you know, quick memory, long memory, all kinds of different crap, and it just squirts out. <laughs> there. You. That's who you are, is what you just... <laughs> But you didn't do any of it. <laughs> you know, a brain did it. Okay, conditioning did it. Education did it. Uh, you know, a, a lifetime of experiences did it. Okay, you had nothing to do with it. Uh, cool, but outside of that, no, it was me. Um, I did what I liked. Okay, so I was just pointing out, you know, sort of getting to some of this is just so incidental to just a, you know, 
personal circumstances <laughs> and it's sometimes they just match you know where you're just you have a theme or an idea in your head you're going to argue or you're the mystic and then there's some shit happening where it just illustrates the the point that um you know fuck brains are you know in such different states i mean it's just amazing how dramatically different you know two humans can be and in terms of having no common sense of right and wrong no common sense of pretty and ugly no common definition of anything <sighs> i mean it's 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 not a good thing i'll tell you that brain profiles and says you know the odds are this wouldn't happen if you know that kind of crap so it is yeah uh, yeah so i was talking just a little bit about that um the profiling thing and the fact that uh, you know there's uh, you know unfortunately there's cliche you know happens all all day long you know and and i watch people being cliche <laughs> And you're just saying, Jesus, fuck. I mean, fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to um, I understand how they can function knowing they're proving um, bad impressions to be perfectly valid. <laughs> Over from you, they steal the quality. You can't use your own yard anymore. All right, some more complaining about the neighbors, the neighborhood. <clears throat> uh, they have a bunch of emotional wiring, a bunch of personal taste wiring. Um, uh, yeah, so just that's all it is, it's wiring, you know. There's big thick wires, there's little thin wires, however you want to think about it. But again, like I said, there's parts of your brain that are more uh, precise and you know, add things up and balance things very carefully. And then there's parts that do crude book cover reading kind of things and reacting. And um, uh, frankly, you could understand that probably, okay, if I want to pay attention to something, I really should pay play attention to the nerd with the slide rule doing the technical work. And I shouldn't be um, too easily convinced by, um, you know, the beer drinking butthead who just says, uh, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Impulses, and the impulses are a manifestation of their brain and their conditioning. And um, I think they understand most of it. So again, he's arguing with everybody. It's if everybody's some sort of wooey free willer, and they all think they are controlling their self or something. And I really don't think they are anything like that. I think even the people who have some notion of a free will thing understand that their brain is creating it okay that it doesn't come from some other place than their brain so um you know it's, it's a lot of semantics in all of this arguing and uh frankly some people just don't want to use the real words um don't want to call the spade a spade kind of thing that we would prefer didn't get in our way uh you could be squeamish at the sight of blood you can say, well, that's not doing me. All right, so I was just pointing out how there's a whole bunch of our personality, the brain has created, uh, uh, painted a picture of you. Um, and there's all kinds of parts of it that your brain can analyze and say, shit, I wish you didn't show that part of me. I wish you didn't have that part. I, you know, so you can find uh, capacity to understand that there are parts of you structurally uh, that aren't pretty and don't work very well. And um, it's annoying, that, but you know, some of them you can fix, some of them you can't. So identifying them as being a problem and then having the financing to repaint it uh, <laughs> you know, are two different things. You don't have, you know, it's not in the budget. Um, some stuff just can't be done uh, in terms of you going back in time and correcting uh, some structural uh, 
uh, crap in your brain that just really forces you to endure, um, you know, paying a price or suffering for stuff you really don't want to suffer over. Hello. I'm not saying that. My brain is making that argument, and I'm watching me make it to myself, essentially. And so that's really all your higher intelligence is doing is making arguments and counter arguments balancing 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 always trying to find which one has uh, more integrity uh, as truth and um, yeah, that's the game we're playing at least some of us are trying to play uh, is to do that um, effectively to the way is is that you have to feel good to do anything ah so yeah this is sort of off the subject but yeah just this you know the, the annoying part of trying to correct anything that's broken in you or any bad habits or all that kind of stuff is so when you feel good you don't want to take on any burden because it feels so good to be free falling in ah i don't have any problems and then when you have some problems some liabilities it's like, oh, I can't make it worse, right? You know. So it's really hard to ever take on that little bit of dirt. You know, there's never a good time to get dirty. Is is sort of the problem. You can't find a good time to get dirty, um, and so you don't um, invest, okay, in fixing something broken because the uh, there's never a good time to to you know pay the money to clean up uh you know that kind of stuff um so i mean yeah that seems like a real easy one um i don't know exactly what that one was but who cares let's move on and you're just going to, have to spend the rest of your life working around that defect rather than pretending you could ignore it or sneak around yeah so I, I really was struggling a little bit with this side you know it's just how do you you can't fix your conditioning entirely it's really difficult so there's you know you can only have limited expectations about how you can get somewhere um my brain just popped up bruce jenner or something in my head uh and just said you know yeah you have two choices you know either you try to make your desires and and preferences match what you have okay you either start to like your penis and something blah 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 or you go through surgery blah blah blah, blah to make your body match what your brain wants it to be you know so you have that you know and it's neither choice is very good um and is difficult and is maybe even in, maybe there's no good road to it uh it's either one so i'm just saying it's this is a thing where we have to accept um, your own brain has to accept its own deficiencies and that even can be a liability because you'll keep making excuses for being an asshole uh, you know I've been there and done that <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and so there's all kinds of there's all kinds of rules and you know the, this whole thing of navigating the you know intellectual ocean does require um, some skills. You really do have to pay attention to an awful lot of details about how reactions and emotions and all this stuff get in your way. To an end, because he always does this, so he's come to some end, I don't know, just does <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, finished making his point, which was, he just said, listen, or something. It's like, what, what do you mean, listen to what? Pay attention to what you're told. What does that mean? Uh, you know, I mean, he's, 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 he's just bush. Uh, yeah, I, I just I can't believe somebody would, you know, make whatever twelve videos in a week on trying to say something, and then what he's saying is is um, do what you're told. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> That's to him. Okay. So, so uh, I was pointing out <laughs> that for him, 
there's no meaning to your life in the sense that you're not part of a civilization. You're not a cog in this whole thing. You can't change anything. You could never be a Martin Luther King. You could never be a meme changer. You could never do anything. So just play with yourself. Just spend the day wanking. You know, don't bother taking any part of existence seriously. And obviously, I think that's just ridiculously evil. Audience, do you think your brain controls you? I think your audience would say yes. Yeah, so again, it's just semantics. I mean, he's trying to paint this thing that he's defeating. So, I mean, it's a straw man. I mean, it really just isn't the right argument. He's not arguing the argument. Okay, and the argument is, is that, yes, we are individual brains. Um, and the fact is... That we have an individual you know, triggers and we have a configuration. Uh, we have a, a, a diagram, uh, even a piece of genetic code. And all of that uh, can't have any meaning if it doesn't, if it's not incorporated into the game. So obviously we do have control in the sense that we can know what flying right looks like. And we can know what crashing looks like. And we can see which one we're doing. Except you becoming persuaded, okay, of advantage and victory until you're persuaded that it's going to make you richer. Or yeah, that's the trick. It's all this, you know, this balancing and tipping of scales and, and frankly, um, you know, I'm in the game of playing let's tip some scales and frankly I have to concede I'm not throwing my weights uh, very well uh, because I'm not um, you know, affecting enough changing enough fucking enough um, <laughs> you know um, uh, you could say you know pouring pour, I'm, I'm pouring the penicillin and it's not getting into the water you know you know, I'm pouring badly, <laughs> you know, so, um, and we can see it, you know, so I can recognize it, you can recognize it, everybody can see it, um, and so something changes because, yeah, we all recognize it's not working, so you have to do something different, you have to do something, uh, you know, to make it work, uh, you know, and I have to work on that constantly. Now, yes, changing background <laughs> images or putting another me over there or something. Yeah, that's probably not going to do it. Um, you know. But it's hard to know what the little, you know, to dealing with people. You know, I mean, I could grow some boobs. I mean, I don't know. You know, may, I, who knows what it is you have to do, okay, for, a, uh, to, to, you know, <laughs> you, know you, watch, you watch commercials and you say, who the fuck actually buys a product after watching the commercial when you know I want to burn the company down you, you know you, the, the commercials are so insulting and patronizing and nonsensical you're just saying what kind of evil company is this that would produce a commercial that's such a pile of shit uh, and you're saying god you know they're evil they're like Nazis we gotta stop them uh, you know yeah. the last thing you want to do is buy the shit that's the world we live in so yes, it's very hard to um, <laughs> you know to be able to you know know oh I'm supposed to I'm supposed to buy the Nazi product and then I can get somewhere. Oh no, I can't do that. And it always is a big huge payoff if he invests this little bit of time, uh, you know, in um, improving uh, some condition. You know. Right. So again, again, talking just about the fact that you know uh, this, we all procrastinate. I mean, I think that's a common thing. Uh, so we all have this procrastinator inside the brain. The brain has a a device, a mechanism, a, a you know a, a conditioned, uh, triggered response mechanism um, that creates rationalizations and excuses to do what's immediately more comfortable. Answer, uh, being stupid sucks. 
and the fact that we do live in a civilization that is yeah so again just ragging on the fact that he is this he's this person trying to convince people not to fight the nazis not to go to the war um not to you know play a role because somehow we're inevitably going to win the war whether we fight it or not you know it's this kind of notion that somehow the 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 end of the story is already written therefore it doesn't matter what we do that's so fucking stupid. Of course, we have to do all the stuff you need to get to the end of the story, right? If the end of the story has us on top of the staircase, then the rest of the story has to explain how we stepped up the staircase, for fuck's sake. The rest of the story can't be they sat on their asses and ate potato chips and then landed on top of the staircase. No, that didn't happen. Okay, so if we know we are, if we know we want to make the inevitable end of the story be we're going to be on top of the staircase, then we know we have to fucking put going up the stairs in the script. And he's selling. No, it doesn't matter. Don't bother going up the stairs. <laughs> Don't bother doing any work uh, because we're going to get on the top anyway. Oh, wait. Well. Yeah, you think you could figure out that don't work that way? In time, democratic participation. Is so yeah, so we have all have this obligation to be players, okay? Because if we don't play, uh, the other team wins. <laughs> yeah. Has to do what Helen Keller had a hard time doing. Okay, is, yeah, so it's just a simple thing, you know, just the simple idea of what we are. We're just machines, biological machines built by evolution. We have certain tools. One of the tools is this whole perceptual stuff, the senses and all that kind of crap. We developed a little bit of this communication thing so we could be a dangerous group, a mob. We could kill all, everything else as a group. We could do lots of stuff collectively. Um, so we became very dangerous predators, blah, 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 blah. And um, all in the context of, again, th this idea that it's just a tool. And then language just, you know, exponentially increased uh, the capacity of our brain to manipulate. Because instead of just seeing stop and go signs, it could, it could, it could um, label complex ideas and concepts. It could... It could label wet. It could label uh, notions of death and life and uh, starting and ending. Lots of different things. And it can manipulate concepts instead of just trees and bushes and dirt. I think it's harder on the people in the future. And then the secondary... So, 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 so again, the, this again is, you know, the, the, the mystic is sort of um, trying to contrive some, well, I'm just trying to help people find inner peace or some sort of crap like that. When what you have to f help people find is their uh, capacity and courage to be a, a hero. The world doesn't need inner peacers. The world needs heroes. The future needs. If the future has a vote, it's going to keep pressing the be a hero button. Be a Martin Luther King. Be a hero. Be somebody who really tries to do something for fuck's sake. Who risks something. Who takes it. You know, do some work. You fucking lazy asses. Because our welfare is dependent on you. Okay, we're riding on the boat you're building, and you're building a shitty raft. Uh, that's the truth of it. And instead of arguing for people being burdened and tormented, uh, incredibly uncomfortable, um, sacrificing, uh, you know, shoveling the coal, and, you know, no. He's telling people to sit in the couch and eat Twinkies. Yeah, disgusting. That, you know, the, the ideal construction is to have yourself in a condition where you require very little to make it. Oh, yeah, so this whole low-maintenance argument, you know, you, you want to be as low-maintenance as possible. You want to have to put as little in to make you happy and comfortable enough and um, to get the most out of you, you know, and it's just this, there's this 
you know, this is all psychology, you know, and there's all these people that are so high maintenance, everything has to have no dust on it, and it can't have this, and it can't, it has to be in a wrapper, and it has to be in a good, it has to be a seal, it's, a baby, baby. it's all this fucking nonsense, you know, all this, this, um, uh, superfluous, trivial crap that people need. Sad. <sighs> Tragic. You know, the story of being alive, conscious, self-aware, <laughs> having a personality, um, it's really easy to explain. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's a short story, but it's profound in terms of, it's just profound that, that we're in this position to be uh, a piece of bacteria that can um, see it, understand it, talk about it, analyze it, dissect it, um, get to the truth of it. Now, unfortunately, the truth of it is it's a tragic story. It's not a good story. And, um, you know, but, you know, that's just part of being grown up and having to accept that uh, all the stories aren't going to be good. All the events that are possible to happen in the universe aren't going to be good events. <laughs> and um, yeah, this was a, this one was really nature inventing ouch was a really bad idea. Really bad. All right, so that's probably a good place to end. All right, so till the next time and such. Uh, uh, this has been a do not God dot com video presentation uh, and such. No, on YouTube, but you know, what am I? you don't really have a choice, do you? No, got to play some of the game on their fucking ugly, disgusting, horrible playing field. button.